Watcher, and welcome to Sad Serio and the fifth episode of Designing and Building an Electric Guitar. In this episode, I will begin the process of building the neck for my guitar. Throughout the project, my wife has put up with a lot of my boring chat which isn't unusual in itself, but this took new extremes as I began thinking about making the guitar neck. My latest yawn-worthy topic of discussion has been flatness. I will be making the neck with the headstock angled back to 15 degrees. I've chosen to do this for a variety of reasons, including introducing some break angle over the zero fret, which will do away with any need for string tees. To get this angle from a flat piece of wood, I'll be using a scarf joint. To make the scarf joint, and indeed the neck in general, it was important for this process that the piece of wood I used for the neck was completely flat, parallel and square on all sides. As I hadn't paid my wood supplier to do this for me, this was going to be something that I needed to figure out for myself. Even if I had paid for the wood to be perfectly prepared, there was no guarantees it would stay this way as it acclimatised to its new surroundings, so this was a process that was definitely worth learning. I avoided using hand planes for this task, as I would have had to learn to use them properly, and as this build is taking long enough as it is, I decided to use power tools. The straightforward way to get wood flat and parallel using power tools involves using a jointer, a thicknesser, and a table saw, none of which I have, and all rather expensive, and, in the case of a table saw, probably too big and dangerous to fit into my small workshop. What I elected to do instead is buy a large plate of glass. Float glass is sheets of glass made by floating molten glass over vast beds of molten metal. It's also a type of glass that is used in normal household windows. It just so happens that float glass is one of the cheapest ways to get a rather large flat surface, certainly flat enough to use as a reference surface when building guitars. With that in mind, I place an order with Alveston glass in Derby for a sheet of float glass 80 centimetres by 60 centimetres. I rested this on a sheet of MDF with a thin layer of rubber sandwiched in between to try to minimise any deflection in the glass's surface from any unevenness in the sheet of MDF. With this sheet of glass and two lengths of aluminium box section, I had a very flat setup to use with my router flattening sled. I wish I had thought of this when I was thickness in the guitar body blanks. Sticking the neck blank to the glass with masking tape and super glue flattening one surface with the router, then flipping the wood over and repeating the process on the other side, I was able to completely flatten the blank. I also needed the sides of the blank to be both flat and perfectly square to enable me to accurately make the scarf cut. To do this, I came up with this simple little jig. Using this jig, I can ensure that each remaining side of the blank can be butted up against a straight edge, which is then offered up to a bearing cutter bit on the router table. A combination square ensures that both sides of the neck blank are running perfectly parallel using this jig.
I did manage to introduce a little ding as I tipped the jig over slightly during the routing, but this piece will be cut away as waste when I cut out the final neck shape. I checked the flatness of this neck blank with a straight edge over a few days, and there was a bit of movement in the wood. I returned the neck blank to flatness with a cabinet scraper, periodically checking my progress and removing high spots a bit at a time. Next, I put together a simple 15 degree sanding jig with two identically sloping pieces which are there to guide a sanding block. I used this jig to mark a 15 degree line on the neck blank to make the scarf joint. It was at this point that I realised that my neck blank was far too wide to make the scarf cut on my bandsaw. Plan B was making this cut with a snazzy Japanese Ryoba saw. I practised this cut on a couple of pieces of scrap and they both went perfectly. Emboldened, I carefully went for it. The results were awful. I had allowed the saw to wander far too much during the cut and it was a real mess. Instead of using my sanding jig to clean up this cut, I taped the headstock portion to the neck portion and cleaned it all up on the belt sander, which worked an absolute treat to level off the untidy cut marks. This allowed me to use the sanding jig as intended to prepare two pieces for gluing up by sanding them perfectly square with one another at an angle of 15 degrees. I read a variety of different approaches to gluing up headstocks without slipping being an issue. By far the most elegant solution I found was to use masking tape. I wish I'd used this method to glue up the back veneers for the guitar as it would have resulted in a much neater join. I placed the headstock portion on the neck portion in exactly the position it was meant to be glued. I secured this in place with a few strips of masking tape. Then all I had to do was fold back this joint, apply some glue and fold it back into position. I then added a few clamps to apply some pressure as the glue cured. After the glue had dried, I removed the masking tape and sanded excess glue away to leave a good clean scarf joint. And there we have it. That's a lot of work to essentially saw a piece of wood in two and then glue it back together again, but I'm happy with how it's gone so far. In the next episode, I'll be taking this piece of wood and making it look a lot more like the neck of an electric guitar. Until then, take care and thank you for watching.